Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got a different type of video to show with you guys. Well, not so much. It's still a review, but it's a redemption review. Um, this is the Remet or Remet Rhino. Um, and this is now the third one that I have handled. And this is the only one that is actually, you know, functioning properly. Um, the first two I was not super duper impressed with. And I did a review based on, you know, my, my thoughts and feelings with those knives. Now there was an unfair element, uh, in that review. Uh, my thoughts, you know, remain the same on the action, but, um, I skipped over the fact, uh, that the lock does not operate the way that I thought it does. And that, you know, that was just, it was just wrong. I was just, it was just bad information I was giving out. And so I thought this is a good opportunity considering now that, you know, this newer one that they've sent and they said, Hey, listen, we have corrected the issues that uh, you had on your first two. Um, now that they've done that. And since I got the lock information wrong, I thought this knife deserves a redemption upload. So let me tell you, I'm going to go over all that stuff, uh, but the end result of this video is going to be that I now do absolutely recommend this knife. It's inexpensive, the design is great, and it functions great, and the price on it is pretty awesome. Uh, I'll link this down in the description. You guys can check it out if you want to. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks to Remet for <laughs> continuing and you know trying to make this work and, and sending me one that uh, functions. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. I think it's also important to point out that I looked back, read a bunch of comments, and realized that it may actually have been that the initial runs of these knives were all kind of crappy, more or less, right? And then uh, Remet just got better with their process and made it a little better. And then after, it's it's possible that after I pointed this stuff out, because Remet said, okay, you know, hey, we'll send you another one. They sent me another one, and that one felt exactly the same as the first one. And I said, no, I, you know, I don't, it's, there's, there's a problem here with the action. Then they said, all right, we really did, you know, look into this, and oh, I think you're going to like this third one. And this one functions just fine. There were people commenting in the video under the first review that I did saying that theirs were also falling shut and functioning just fine. So I'm not sure what sort of anomaly is going on there. Maybe some were functioning great and some weren't, and Remet has somehow managed to make this a, you know, a consistent thing across the board now. But what I'm here to do uh, today is give you my experience on this one, this newest variation, which should mimic uh, what is currently available on the market. So if you pick one up, according to Remet, they should function like this now, which is great. Now, since I've already reviewed this knife, uh, I'm not going to go through all the specs and everything like that. I'm going to measure it and then we're just going to move right into the meat and potatoes. Um, if you want the additional specs, you can go back and watch that video, or you can just use the link and check them out for yourself. The overall length of this knife is coming in at seven and a quarter inches. Blade length is right at three inches, and the cutting edge is also right at three inches. I will do just a couple of size comparisons. It is very similar to the size of the Civivi uh, Elementum. It's also very similar in overall size to the Spyderco Para 3. Uh, maybe the Ontario Rat Model 1 is uh, it's kind of close, right? Um, maybe the CGRB Pyrite and the Demco 8020.5. These are all knives that are very similar uh, in size. How's the action? Now, the action is beautiful. The issue that I had with this is that I would push this button and it would not fall. And, you know, I, I sort of... Um, uh, dismiss this and this is why you know like even when I you know I look at knives like this and I'm like I know what this is it's a simple plunge lock right well in this case it's this is why it's always important to look inside because I, I, I miss the fact that this is actually a some people call this a leaf spring operated button lock it's a liner lock that is operated by a button it is not a plunge lock right and a lot of people were saying the inclusion of the detent ball is the reason that the action isn't good. And this one guy got really lit up at me and he was like, you're gonna have the, you're gonna, your frustration is gonna cause them to change it, remove it and make it a simple plunge lock again. And you're, you're, we're sacrificing safety all so that we can fit. Clearly that was a bunch of hoopla. <laughs> no, 
This is still operating with the the button operated liner lock. You're still getting the benefit of the liner lock itself being the thing that locks the blade out. And there is still definitely a detent ball in there. You can see it right there. There's still a detent ball. It's still doing the same thing, but look at this. It's falling shut. Now, I'm glad people pointed that out to me because that's an interesting detail about this knife that we don't normally see on uh, on pocket knives like this, like at this price point. We don't see that stuff, right? But if you thought that you had to have it either one way or the other, no, that's incorrect. It turns out Remit is capable of giving us both this uh, locking system and the action that we should absolutely expect on any knife that operates this way. We should not have to sacrifice. It's 2023. It's not 2008, right? In 2023, we can have both. And we do have both here. So this is fantastic. Now, I'm still going to leave that other review up, but I'm going to have like a, in the title, I'm going to try to put like, you know, see pinned comment. And in the pinned comment, I'm going to link this review. Um, I think it's important to still keep my initial experience with this knife up, but at the same time, update people and link to the current review so that people understand how this process came about rather than just hearing me talk about it, right? It's, that's context. I want that to be there. But the action is not only good now, it is superb. It is exactly what I expect from a knife like this. And you do get the satisfaction of a detent break because there's a detent ball. Yes, very nice. We can also use the little, you know, fuller here. That's really, really great. The thumb studs are just excellent. Look at the size and width of these thumb studs. Very good. You can even front flip it, which is a little bit more tricky because that little unicorn horn isn't sticking up quite as far, but I don't really think you need it. Honestly, this works great. And on top of that, not to say that the original one failed because the lock was plenty strong. Um, and I trust this style of locking system over a plunge lock. It did not fail, but just to, just to put the cherry on top of this review. Yeah. Nice. This is what I like to see. I had another, there's another model that failed three times on this channel and I won't give it a, I won't give it a fourth chance. But the fact that this, there, there never was a lock issue with this, a, a lock solidity or stability or reliability issue with this. And the fact that the problem for me was the action. It felt like 2008 action on a 2023, you know, frame. Uh, the fact that they went back and said, no, we, we can definitely fix that. We can make that operate the way that it's supposed to. That's pretty cool, right? They did it. Like they, they did this. So, Presumably, if you buy this knife now, you're going to have the same experience as me, which is very good. That's that's very impressive to me. Um, we don't need to do carry profile or anything like that. Um, the uh, it's like I reiterated, you know, in the first review. <laughs> you can't reiterate something if that was the. Re I'm I'm reiterating something that I said in the first review. The ergonomic lines are very very good, and the pocket clip is very very good. That's a really nice pocket clip. Wish it was just a, a little bit shorter, but that's not really that big of a deal. Um, I think we really should have mounting positions for the pocket clip on both sides because we have a symmetrical clip. That would be really nice. I'm not going to, you know, really come down on them for that because they went out of their way to make this one work. Um, but yeah, the symmetrical uh, or the uh, right and left hand um, positioning for the pocket clip is pretty important. You do have a lanyard hole. All of that's great. I think what's really cool about this knife is the fact that, um, you know, we have a cool um, blade profile. We've got a cool handle profile. Nothing super unique there. Really, the most unique thing here is in the fact that we have a knife at this price point that's utilizing this specific type of locking system, which is a little bit different, right? But also, the fact that it comes in 14C28N, which is not a steel that companies are having trouble heat treating. That's the nice thing about 14C28N, even at this price point. For the most part, you can expect it to be heat treated properly because it just isn't an overly complicated steel. It's not a finicky steel. It's not a tricky, right? Apparently, it's not. It's not no, no, nowhere near as, as tricky as M390, right? So companies just cannot get that, uh, you know, to the right, right, um, Rockwell. But the 14T28N is an incredibly balanced steel and arguably the very best steel that you can get at this price point. And usually, it's. Um, where we see budget knives at the higher end of where I like to see them, which is much closer to $75. We're 
With this guy, your base price comes in at $50. And uh, uh, periodically, you can find them on Amazon for substantially less. I just looked and they had like a coyote version of this for 35 bucks or something like that. That's really good. Um, we're getting a, a different type of locking system. We're getting superb fit and finish, great action now, superb and reliable lockup, a good EDC profile, a good blade profile and cutting geometry, right? It's a good knife for 50 bucks. Honestly, it's one of the better buys. Um, I'm, uh, I went from like being just super annoyed with this knife because my, my whole perspective was, is like, you know, here, here comes Remet, one of like a thousand new Amazon brands, and they're all doing the exact same thing, right? And then I get the, uh, the crummy action, and I'm just like, man, they're just, this is just like capitalization on a growing knife market, right? And with there being lots and lots of new people, there's lots of people buying like fairly inexpensive knives because they, are just not ready to buy a two, three, four hundred dollar knife, right? So what we're doing is we're appealing to those new people by using the materials that all the bigger reviewers say are really, really good, but we're not putting the extra effort into things like action or things, you know, that a more seasoned knife enthusiast might pick up on, but a new person wouldn't, wouldn't, you know, uh, even consider, right? And that, that turns into a whole nother discussion of, you know, well, is it even important then? I mean, in my opinion, yes, right? But, that was my that was my view. I was like, Remet's just cutting corners here because they don't have they're, they're not appealing to the the, the seasoned knife veterans. <laughs> it just sounds like a really lame club, um, but uh, they're appealing to new people who don't know better. No, it turns out they do care. Um, this was a big deal. Now a lot of you might say, well, yeah, they care because you pointed it out. Now, I have a feeling that either way, these knives were going to make the rounds. I mean, I'm not the only channel that they ended up on, right? Uh, one way or another, you know, it comes down to whether a company cares or doesn't. Remick could have easily been like, yeah, well, he doesn't like it, whatever, right? We're just going to keep doing what we're doing. Because my guess is that at that price, they probably would have sold either way. But they, uh, no, they made this great. This works. And on top of that, this is a coated blade. I mean, the detent ball has worn its race in and it's falling shut. I, I made no adjustments to this whatsoever. This is how this knife came to me. So this is one of the more unique buys and one of the better priced options for this. If you're looking for a 14C28N button lock, right? But you've always been wary about how button locks function. Maybe you've seen on my channel like multiple button lock failures. The locking system on this knife is not the plunge lock. It is the liner lock. Right? Or it's a leaf spring that's moved out of the way when you push the button. Again, you can see here it actually moves left out of the way when you push that, which is pretty cool. It's a much better system, and this feels a lot more like a you know a traditional liner or frame lock detent break because there's a detent ball in place where there is not on a regular plunge lock. On a regular plunge lock, it is the lock itself that's creating the detent watch. Well, you can't see it now because of the way that that comes around. How about uh, here? See? Move it up. There's the lock. And into the closed position, it's, which is now creating the detent. And that's fine. That works, right? But the geometry has to be very, very good for these to not slip out of place. This, obviously, the geometry still has to be good, right? But I think it's a little easier to get the geometry cre uh, correct on something like this. So as far as I'm concerned, officially, on this channel, and by the way, there's no blade play up, down, left, or right, right? No stick, no detent lash. Extremely smooth. Man, whatever they did, it's really good now. Um, and the detent is great, and we have perfect centering. This is a very recommendable knife now. If you pick these, if you pick one of these up, I mean, obviously, if you have a problem, reach out to them. And Remet, here's something huge that a lot of companies that are similar to yours are not doing. They are basically ignoring people who are having issues, warranty issues. If you want to stand out from the crowd, there are big name Chinese companies that flat out ignore warranty requests. If you're selling on Amazon and somebody's having an issue, respond to it, offer them a replacement, right? 
Um, that's something that could really make you go above and beyond and get people paying attention to your brand or to your product. Because a lot, of, like what I generally see is, if you have an issue with a knife like this, um, that you're just ignored. So um, this is really cool that you are, um, you know, willing to uh, try and improve quality control and improve action on things like this, um, so that uh, you know these these products. If there's something wrong with them, they they are, you know, they can be redeemed. Um, that's really cool. But also, I'm not saying this has specifically been a problem with your brand, but if you want to stand out from the crowd as a growing company, uh, you know, pay attention when people say like, hey, you know, I know I'm not Metal Complex complaining to, you know, 10,000 people on YouTube, but I do have an issue with this. Um, that would be that would be a good idea. So Rema has been pretty good about communicating with people in my comment section, so I know that they watch and I know that they listen. So I'm just hoping that this message lands. I'm I'm much more impressed now than I was the, with the first knife that I received, and definitely with the first two that I received here. So, yeah, uh, thank you very much for doing that. I'm sure that other people will be much more interested in this knife now. Um, but I'll make sure that this knife is linked down in the description. You guys can check it out if you want to. As far as I'm concerned, this knife is a win. It's a pass now. It's going to go in my recommended knives playlist. And it's going to go on my Cheap Knives I Like playlist because, hey, it's 50 bucks and it's a really good deal. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal underscore Complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.